Hey guys, hey, thanks for being with me. This is Alan, Solid Rock Bible Class, and we're going to look at our word for the day. Our word for the day is anchored. Have you ever really thought a whole lot about anchors? Kind of a kind of an interesting thought pattern here for a second as I was looking at it this week. And uh, let's look over into the book of Hebrews, first of all. In Hebrews, the sixth chapter, verse 19, he says, Which hope we have as an anchor of our soul, both sure and steadfast, and which endureth into that within the veil. Listen to this for a second. We have an anchor of the soul, both sure and steadfast. Kind of makes you think for a second maybe about about the song on the solid rock i stand all other ground is sinking sand we have an anchor we have an anchor it if you kind of look at this particular verse it has three aspects to it it talks about the fact that we have an anchor that's sure we have an anchor that's steadfast and then as we look at the last piece of that, it really talks to us about the fact that we have a sacred anchor. But have you ever really thought about this? Every boat has an anchor, or I'll put it this way, it's supposed to. Otherwise, the authorities are not going to be real happy with you if you're floating a boat out there without an anchor. Uh, but what exactly is an anchor? It could be several different things. Sometimes you think of an anchor as maybe being like a sheetrock type of an anchor, one of those things that it goes into the wall and grabs really good maybe, and and uh, that might be a type of an anchor you think about. Maybe it's a, one of these redheads. If, if the guys probably know what a redhead is, where you take and you sink something down like into cement, and again, it becomes this anchor point, something that is, that's, that allows you to ground something and, and, and really grab something really well. But in a boat situation, an anchor is really made to keep a boat from, from drifting. Uh, I've got a little boat and, and I have a couple of anchors. And uh, not quite a while back actually, it, uh, we, was, we was out and I lost my favorite anchor because it became so entangled with something under the water that uh, I had to end up cutting it loose. You know, we always have times within our life when we need this firm, solid anchor. There's an interesting piece about an anchor though. If you can see the anchor, it's not being used. If we see it, it's not doing anything because it's going to be underwater or it's going to be behind something, in something. Have you, within our lives, you know, uh, just a couple of thoughts. A guy drives to work at 6.30 in the morning. He works hard. He works eight hours. At the end of the day, he's laid off or maybe he's fired or something comes up where he has to actually just quit his job hey there's a storm there all of a sudden isn't there there's a time that he needs something solid to grab onto something solid to anchor to you think of maybe we're, we we live in an agriculture area here and you think of these storms we've had this last year, and you think of some of these farmers who have these crops, and all of a sudden there's, there's been this huge storm and it destroys their crops. And maybe that farmer's already deep in debt. He's, he's got storms going on in his life, doesn't he? You have a widow that takes and has to face an empty house for the first time in 30, 40, 50 years storms going on in their life you have a parent that's sitting there and it's 3 a.m. in the morning their 16 year old child hasn't came home yet <clears throat> they've got a storm going on don't they the thing is every single one of us we have storms <clears throat> that are in our life but we have this sure anchor 
as it says back in Hebrews, the sixth chapter, verse 19. Which hope we have as an anchor of our soul, both sure and steadfast. Let's look at some things here as far as anchors go. The one I always think about when we um, think about anchors, it goes into Paul. And, uh, you know, Paul was shipwrecked more than one time. And uh, I'm going to look in the book of Acts, and it's talking about one of his shipwrecks. It's one of those actual shipwrecks that that he had that, that it's kind of funny because I, I was asked to teach this particular passage when I had a huge storm going on in my life. I remember I was handed this kind of at the last minute as far as like the day before. And I looked at the scripture and I was so distraught with where I was at. It was like, what in the world am I going to do with the scripture? <clears throat> Come to find out teaching this particular passage, it uh, had a huge impact on me that day. But Acts, the 27th chapter, verse 17, I'm going to kind of wander through this here. We, we see Paul, and uh, Paul, when he left initially from Crete, he had warned the, uh, the mariners there. He says, you know, I don't really think, he says, I'm not a mariner, but I really don't think it's probably safe here to go ahead and leave. But they saw that it was decent weather, and they headed out on the journey with Paul as a prisoner going to Rome. <clears throat> And uh, we see up to this point, if I'd read up to the up through verse 17, we see that they've already had some problems and they've actually already shipwrecked to some degree or at least, at least been stranded on an island. And they undergird the ship here, we're going to see in verse 17, and they've decided it's not safe to where they're going, where they're at, and so they're going to head back out on their journey. And in Acts 27, 17, it says, which when they had taken up, <clears throat> they used helps undergirding the ship and fearing lest that they should fall into the quicksand, they st st trail, <laughs> strike sail, and, uh, and so were driven. So we see that they take and they've already had these problems. They've taken and done some things to reinforce the boat and they're heading back on the journey. And we being exceedingly tossed with a tempest, the next day they lighten the ship. So they're out, it's a tremendous storm, and they've all of a sudden, they've started lightening the ship with anything they didn't have to have within a day of heading back out on these rough seas. On, in verse 19 it says, And the third day we cast out with our own hands the tackling of the ship. Notice they threw everything out they could throw out at this particular point just to possibly survive what's going on. And then in verse 20, it says, And when neither sun nor stars in many days appeared, and no small tempest lay on us, all hope that we should be saved had been taken away. Have you ever been kind of in that situation? You've been tied up in, in this problem for a period of time, and all of a sudden... There just doesn't seem like there's any hope. There doesn't seem like there's any way out of this situation. And then Paul steps up here in verse 21, and it says, But after long absence, Paul stood forth in the midst of them and said, Sirs, you should have hearkened unto me and not have loosened from Crete, Notice, Paul, finally, he stood up and he said, you should have listened to me. God spoke to me. You should have listened to me. In verse 22, it says, now I exhort you to be of good cheer. Oh, they, they've been in this terrible storm. They've got the ship that's been reinforced. They've thrown most anything overboard to lighten the ship up. And he says, be of good cheer. He says, for there will be no loss of any man's life among you, but of the ship. He said, the ship's going to be destroyed, but you're going to live. And in verse 23, he goes on, he says, For there stood beside me this night the angel of God, whose I am, in whom I serve. Notice 
He said, God has spoken to me directly. And in verse 24, it says, saying, fear not, Paul, thou must be brought before Caesar. And lo, God hath given thee all them that sail with thee. Wherefore, sirs, be of good cheer, for I believe God, that it shall be even as he told me. How be it, we must be Howbeit, we must be cast upon a certain island. In verse 27, he says, But when the fourteenth night was come, can you imagine? Two solid weeks of this terrible storm. It says, But when fourteen nights was come, and we've driven up and down. Boy, I mean, that's that's terrible. I can't, I, I've been in some rough seas before and never really anything like this. And just a few hours, and you are just, you're, you're, you're just dead. And he goes on in verse 28, and he says, And surrounded, and found, uh, I'm sorry, they, we, they, they had just, I didn't finish the last verse there, but they, they knew that they was coming close to some type of a shore. And so they, they sounded, and found that they was at 20 fathoms. And then they went a little bit further, and they sounded again, and found it. 15 fathoms. So all of a sudden, the water is getting shallower. It's dark. They can't see anything. They know they're heading towards some kind of shore in this tremendous, tremendous storm. And then in verse 29, it says, Then fearing lest we should have fallen to the rocks, they cast out four anchors out of the stern, and they wished for the day. They threw out four anchors from that boat, to grab onto something to stop this boat from going into the rocks. And it says they wished for the day. That's they they really had very little hope here. They was just grabbing at any kind of hope and any kind of a straw. And as the shipmen were about to flee out of the ship, when they when they had let down the boat into the sea, they they were starting to let down the lifeboats under we see under the sea. Paul said again in verse 31, Paul said to the centurion and to the soldiers, except these abide in the ship, ye cannot be saved. You know, that's a particular piece of a verse that stuck with me for many years. We have to abide in the ship. We have to be there. Or we're not going to make it. We have to stay with God. Or we're not going to make it. And notice in verse 32, the soldiers, they were listening to Paul at this particular point. He had warned them. He had told them God had spoken with him. Everything that Paul had said up to this point came true. And it says, then the soldiers cut off the ropes of the boat and let her fall. You know, we all have storms. We all have problems. We all have tough times that happen to us. We have challenging times that come to us. Remember David when he took and he grabbed his sling and went against a giant? You remember Daniel when he refused to bow down and he ended up in a lion's den? Remember Elisha when he faced the prophets of Baal? That was almost an impossible task, wasn't it? Remember Job when he's covered with boils and people didn't understand him? How about Moses when he stood before Pharaoh and said, let my people go? See, the anchor, one of the anchors we have is, is an anchor of protection. Paul was protected here by God's angels. He knew he belonged to God. He knew the communication he had with God was real. He relied on God for the safety. A book that made an impact on my life, and, and of course there's a movie, and it, it also had quite the impact by Corey Ten Boom, talking about being protected in her Nazi death camp as she passed by the guards with a Bible hidden under her clothes. 
See, being a Christian and being in God's protection doesn't mean there's any absence of danger. There's danger there. But we have this absence, or we have this anchor of, of a purpose within our life. Remember what Paul said here. See, Paul had a sense of purpose. In the middle of all of the storm, he was going to live for God. He was going to live for Christ. He was going to be the shining example. He was going to be the witness. He couldn't remain silent anymore, but when Paul... The prisoner, when he took and he, he, what did he do? He turned around and he shared his faith. He shared his hope. And I think sometimes we need to ask questions to ourselves. Do we do this? Also know, Paul had this, this presence to himself here in verse 25. He says, I believe God. That's an anchor. I believe God. He will not leave thee. He will not forsake thee. I believe God. That's what Paul said here in, in verse 25. He knew in his heart that he was in God's protection. He knew the character of God, didn't he? He trusted God to do what he would promised he would do. So, you know, these anchors that you have, and these anchors that I have, they're critical. And it's all based on our relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. We need these anchors in our life because storms will come. It's not if they'll come, it's when they'll come. There's going to be rough spots in our life. And again, God doesn't take us away from the danger. He just guides us through. So, if you're not a Christian, you need to become a Christian. Come to Jesus. Put your life in Jesus' hands. Have that anchor that you can grab onto when these things just don't go well. See, the thing is that his anchors, they'll take and secure us during these life storms that are absolutely guaranteed to happen. So this is Alan. Just think about this weekend. Just think about the anchor, the anchors we have through the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, and I'll catch you a little bit later.